Hi everybody, Mark Skanga. Welcome to Music Minutes. I'm very excited right now to be sitting with the first lady of the harp guitar, the lovely and talented Muriel Anderson, who is a certified guitar player. Hi Muriel. Hi, <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. Tell everybody what it means to be a certified guitar player. Well, <laughs> it's such a thrill. It knocks me out. I, I really don't claim that title. You so, don't? No, no, no. Um, Chet Atkins decided to give himself an honorary degree, and so he gave himself a CGP, a Certified Guitar Picker. Yeah. And he got to think, well, maybe I can give that to other people too. And so you know, he gave me a little, uh, you know, a little pin or something like that. Okay, you're just because it's wow. sort of a joke, you know. So you're a CGP. Then. And so, uh, <laughs> and then he started doing it officially and, gi and do, uh, giving one per year. But he passed away before he was able to officially give everyone. Oh my uh, their goodness. CGP. So uh, there are some of us who never got our official CGP. <laughs> so got, I don't, yeah. I don't claim it then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you sure so, are a certified guitar Well, player. thank you, thank you. And you were good friends with Chet, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. How did really you come supportive. to know him? Uh, I took mandolin lessons from Jethro Burns. The famous Jethro Burns? Yes. Uh, I played this tune, you know the one that goes... That one. Nola, yeah. And, um, and Jethro said, oh, you've got to meet my brother-in-law, Chet Atkins. He recorded that song. Wow. And so, uh, so that's how the introduction was made. I understand that you uh, studied the classical guitar. Did you start off with classical music? No, no. A lot of people think I did, but uh, I was the one kid in the family who didn't like classical music, you know? <laughs> and uh, I started with folk and bluegrass and then joined the school jazz band and mm -hmm. liked international music. And uh, the only way to study guitar in college was to study classical. So I came to it late. I'd been playing since I was seven or eight. And over that summer, I heard the music of Christopher Parkening, and I was really taken. I said, wow, what beautiful tone. I'd love to be able to get that kind of tone. Oh, he's quite amazing. Yeah, so... And did you actually study with Chris Parkening? Then, uh, after college, uh, he taught master classes in Bozeman, Montana, so I went to several of his master classes. Wow. Study from him. Wow. That's the same story I have. I didn't study classical guitar until I went to college. Yeah. 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 But I'm glad I did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because you're one of the only other nylon string players that I meet in these finger style summits. And, you know, I know that you won the national finger picking, right? When yeah, it was still called yeah national I, was, I was the first Wolver nylon Valley. string to, to win that. You were the first one? Okay. First nylon string. But, but there's a, a number of, of pickers now who play finger style and nylon string. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It just didn't look like they, they liked us so much for a while. <laughs> for a while, yeah. <laughs> Now, you've been traveling all over the world playing. The other night when we played, you played those beautiful Japanese pieces. Is that how you came around to that, from visiting there? Uh, I learned that before I uh, visited Japan. I had a lot of Japanese people in my audiences uh, in Chicago. Oh, wow. So I uh, was studying for that Christopher Parkening master class I told you about. Uh -huh. And I studied from Seigo Yamada, because he was a student of Parkening's uh, over that summer. And I asked Sego, would you teach me a Japanese tune? And so he told me, uh, Muriel, in order to really understand Japanese music, you must first go study Japanese flower arranging. 
And, you know, wow. I, I had kind of a busy schedule, and so I did the next best thing. I went to a Japanese restaurant, <laughs> of course. And, you know, there I, I picked up, you know, some of the way things were arranged, the art on the walls, the music, a little of the language. And I noticed in all those things there was an attention to space and detail, and space and lots of little things. And also a real politeness to the culture. A little holding back and so I applied those things to the music and then I came up with a, a much more believable interpretation of the Sakura. You know as you're saying those things to me I'm thinking they all apply to the way you play not just the Japanese pieces but you're, rather than being an overly showy player you're someone who plays with space and attention to the smallest Details. It's well, it's the details that make the music. Isn't it? So if you're doing sakura, I don't usually play it on this instrument, but, but you know the melody will go like this. So instead of doing that, I'll. So you really, you got that little intonation as you're bending the strings, it makes it sound like a kodo. Yeah, it's a combination between a, a classical vibrato like this and a rock and roll vibrato up and down, you know. So you use whatever techniques you find and then, you know, play towards the bridge, play a little more off the fingernail than the fingertip. Uh -huh. And so, you know, if I don't know the technique already, I just kind of invent it. You know? To great effect. Now you're sitting here playing this gorgeous harp guitar and uh, I know harp guitar is one of your big things. Tell us a little about the harp guitar and how you came to it. When I started classical in college, uh, you know, for the first time I was playing a, like little Bach pieces. And in my mind I was hearing, I was hearing this note. Yeah. Right. I was hearing an octave lower than what I had. I kept on reaching for these notes that weren't there. And I started writing tunes, reaching for notes that weren't on my guitar. And uh, I'd seen pictures of a harp guitar. I said, that's what I need, something with low resonating bass strings. And I heard this guy named Michael Hedges played one. So I went to a Michael Hedges concert. I felt a little out of place. It was a rock club, and, and I saw an older couple who looked equally out of place. And so I sat next to them. And it turned out that they were there for the same reason, to see this instrument, uh, because his uh, great uncle had built that instrument, uh, from the Larson brothers in Chicago, and they were writing a book on the instruments. And so while we were sitting there, he asked me to record the music for Guitars and Mandolins in America, that book, and got to play my first harp guitar. Wow, how exciting. And now, who made this guitar? This is made by Mike Doolin in Portland, Oregon. It's really extraordinary, and it's unique because it's the only time I've seen a harp guitar that had a, a nylon six string to it. Is that common? Is it, or... uh, there aren't very many that have nylon. I uh, originally had it built as a travel harp guitar, a practice harp guitar, so I could learn to play it because the, the full size one was too big to take with me anywhere. Wow. And so I said, well, make it uh, small enough to fit in the overhead bin so it's tuned a step higher. And I said, well, make it with nylon string so it won't wear away my fingernails so I can still play the flamenco and the classical. And um, so that was initially just for practicing it. And then I thought, wow, it has this whole lute-like sound. Yes, it does. And then it was after I recorded the Harp Guitars Under the Stars CD with John Doan. It's uh, two harp guitars. John has these super trebles on his. And I, I saw the light. I said, I'm going to have one of the super trebles. So this is my second Mike Doolin harp guitar. And this one I had. And man, the yeah, added that too. Are the bass strings also nylon strings? These are nylon strings, but the trebles are steel strings. So it's one of uh -huh. the few instruments that has both nylon and steel. In I the guess same. that would be very hard to get that kind of pitch from a nylon string, wouldn't it? I think it could be done. So I'm curious. I might try to. I love do the that sound the of these one. super trebles. Yeah, so they're, they they're lovely. They're very ringing. Yeah. Wow, so beautiful.
you're getting a lot of attention um, on your new album. Well, two new albums, right? That's right. It's yes. two, isn't it? Night, Light, and Daylight. And you've got an unbelievable cast of characters on this, don't you? Well, it was just an album that had no time limit and no budget. I said, whatever every song needed, that's what it was going to get. And I took two years in recording this. And when, wow. when it was calling for some strings, I hired the Nashville Symphony Strings. And when it was calling for a little Stanley Jordan and Earl Klug back and forth jam, I hired Stanley and Earl. How exciting. And uh, it's got Tommy Emanuel on there and, and Victor Wooten, uh, a lot of Phil Keggy. So Phil wow. helped me out a lot with this CD. He just did a beautiful work on there. And my favorite singer, uh, Mark Kibble from Take Six. Yeah, oh, they're fantastic. So, so really, they really just poured their hearts into it. And it started out as a uh, album of lullabies for my best friend's first baby. Okay. And then, of course, it turned into a second album of music to wake up to, more for the parents, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so that's how it, it kind of evolved. Right. And so I wanted to do really something special to capture this flavor. So it's, if you notice, it's got two front covers, music to wake up to. And I had Brian Allen do the artwork, and we're now working together, combining imagery and, and music. That's fantastic. So that's the music to wake up that's... to, and then you flip it over for the music to go to sleep to. Now there's something special about this album. Okay, now push the, push the moon. Push the moon. Oh, then, look at that. Uh, the first album with fiber optics uh, and a shooting star there. That's fantastic. <laughs> How many albums have you made? Uh, I haven't counted, but it's somewhere around a dozen or so. Wow. Well, because you're playing and recording all the time. Well, yeah, I just did a new one. This it was um, kind of a spontaneous project. Uh, we went to see the solar eclipse. Did you see the eclipse? I did see it. It was oh. partial where we are in yeah, New Jersey. Yeah, we had a, a, a total eclipse in Nashville. Oh, and wow. it was such a cool experience. Brian took some fantastic photos, and and I said, well, why don't we share this? And I was sitting there uh, on the hillside playing harp guitar during this whole event, and people were saying, well, play moon dance, play moon shadow, and, and <laughs> play night lights. And so I, I was playing, you know, kind of accompanying this whole experience. So we captured that in a new greeting card. Uh, the pre-release is out. It'll be out on uh, officially on February 2nd. If you go to my website, you can pre-order them. And that's MurielAnderson.com, right? Yes. Uh, and I'm looking forward to our set in a few minutes here okay. at, at the Woodchoppers. Thank you, Muriel. Thank you, Mark. God bless.